Today we're going to be graphing more absolute value functions and showing how other functions can transform them across the coordinate plane. So starting with number one, we're going to go ahead and graph f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x. So go to your calculator, go to y equals, clear whatever is in there already, type in 2, math, go down over to number, and then choice 1 for absolute value, enter, and put your x inside the absolute value. Then get out of the absolute value, second table. Now, just like when we graph a quadratic function for absolute value functions, you should see a vertex. So in this case, it's already showing up on my, cal on my calculator at 0, 0. So we're going to go ahead and graph a couple of those points so we can see the shape of the, vert of the absolute value function right away. So we have negative 5, 10, which isn't going to fit, but negative 4, 8 should. So left 4 and up 8. Then negative 3, 6. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 2. 0, 0. And then back up the opposite direction. We're going to draw our absolute value function neatly with arrows on both ends and label it f of x. So now it says, if g of x equals f of x plus 4, how is the graph of f of x translated to form g of x? So we know right away it's a translation, which means that it's going to be shifted somehow. We're going to take our f of x and replace it with f of x in g of x. So we have g of x equals 2 absolute value x plus 4. We can put that into our calculator. I'm just going to add 4 at the end. Pull up the table. And we have our new graph. So we can go ahead and graph those points and see what happens. So we have negative 4, 12, which I can't fit. Negative 3, 10, I can't fit. Negative 2, 8, I can. So left 2, up 8. Then negative 1 and 6. Then 0 and 4. Then the opposite side is symmetric. So we have the same shape V, just higher up on our graph for G of X. And as you can tell, it went up 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So this was a shift 4 units up. Then it says, if h of x is equal to f of x minus 3, how is the graph of f of x translated to form h of x? So again, we're now going to replace the x in our original f of x equation with x minus 3. So we have h of x equals 2 absolute value x minus 3. We can pull that up in our calculator. y equals, clear what's there, 2 math number, absolute value, and then x minus 3 inside the absolute value window. Exit the absolute value window, pull up the table, and this time we see our vertex is at 3, 0. So we can graph negative 1, 8, negative or 0, 6, 1, 4, 2, 2, 3, 0 is our vertex, and then it goes up the opposite way, being symmetric to the other half of the absolute value equation. And we get h of x is this graph here. And again, we we're, we were told that it is a translation, which tells us that it's some kind of shift. And we can see from the original f of x equation, the green one, that this was shifted over three units. Shift three units right. And that's a little odd because we have a minus sign here. But keep in mind, when it's inside the parentheses or inside the radical, it moves the opposite direction that the sign tells us. So let's take a look at number four. We'll go through this whole example together before you do the back on your own. So 
So starting with f of x equals 1 half absolute value x. Pulling up that table. We have lots of half values here, but that's okay. So I'm going to kind of skip those and only graph the whole number of values. So I only have out to 8, so I'm going to do negative 8, positive 4. Then negative 6, positive 3. Then negative 4, positive 2. Then negative or negative two positive one. Notice how I'm going down one over two, down one over two, kind of like slope, and then zero zero. And then I'm going to go up one over two to get one, two one, up one over two to get two or four two, and then up one two over two again to get six three, and up one over two again to get eight four. So that number out in front of the absolute value kind of works like your slope. You just have to understand absolute value. So this red line is going to be my f of x. So then for number 5, it says if g of x equals negative f of x all plus 6, how is the graph of f of x transformed to form g of x? So there's multiple transformations here that happened. We're going to see if we can figure out what they are by graphing. So we're going to negate our original f of x function. function. So g of x is negative 1 half absolute value x all plus 6. We put that into our equation, y equals, we can insert the negative, try, trying to avoid clearing the entire thing, make sure you use a negative, not a minus, and then go over and add 6, then pull up the table, and we have negative 8 now at 2. negative 6 at 3, negative 4 at 4, negative 2 at 5, and again you can see I'm going up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, 0 at 6, and if I scroll down, that's my vertex. I'm going to start going down 1 over 2 for 2, 5, down 1 over 2 for 4, 4, and down 1 over 2 again for 6, 3, and one last time down 1 over 2 for 8, 2. And then this winds up being our g of x function. So we can see two things happened here. First, it was reflected because of the negative sign and shifted up 6. Now, it doesn't really look like it was shifted up 6, but if we were to reflect this, oh, it does exactly look like it was shifted up 6. Excuse me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units up. So if it was reflected, the red one would be pointing downwards, and then it would be pulled up 6 units with the shift. All right, lastly, we're going to try one more, h of x. So in this case, we have h of x equals f of x minus 6. So we go back to our original f of x. And we're going to replace x inside the absolute value with x minus 6. So we have h of x equals 1 half of x minus 6. How is the graph transformed to, to form h of x? So again, we go back to our y equals. We can delete the negative. We can delete the plus 6. And we can insert minus 6 into the absolute value and pull up our table. Find the vertex. So you're looking for the turning point. Looks like the turning point is at 6, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and graph as much of it as I possibly can. So going over to negative 8 again, I have negative 8, positive 7. We 
ignore that one little green dot there. And then negative 6, 6, down 1 over 2. Negative 4, 5, down 1 over 2 again. Negative 2, 4, down 1 over 2 again. Negative, or 0, 3 rather, down 1 over 2. 2, 2, down 1 over 2. 4, 1, down 1 over 2. 6, 0, down 1 over 2. And then 8, 1, so that's where the vertex was, and then it turns back up. So this right here is our h of x. And what type of transformation was happened there? Well, if we go back to our original red function, it was shifted over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the right. So you can see that there are all different parts of the mother function or the vertex function for um, absolute value that transform the original absolute value function by either shifting it left or right, up or down, compressing it or you're stretching it or reflecting it over the x-axis. And hopefully you're starting to see what parts of the equation do that. So you're on your own on the back half of the notes. I'll be around to help you out.